I never realised how often I talked about eyes. Eyes are the windows to the soul. Look here, keep an eye on that, use your eyes. Did you look properly? My daughter's eyes were big and dark brown. People often commented on them. She has beautiful eyes. But one day, shortly after her third birthday, I noticed something unusual about her right eye. In the half-dark of her bedroom, when her pupils were most dilated, the right one was not quite right. Instead of black, it was as if I could see through it, and there was something white clouding the inside. I tried to ignore it, thinking paranoid, overprotective mother, but I kept noticing, and it kept bothering me, so I got her dad to make an appointment with the GP. The appointment was on a Monday, and on the Sunday before, in a quiet moment of idle curiosity, I opened up a Google search and typed in transparent pupil. Nothing of particular interest showed up, mostly I know now because everyone has transparent pupils. It's the fluid inside the eye which is black. After a few other fruitless searches I typed in white pupil and that's when the world ended. Page after page of terrifying search results appeared and the thing that kept leaping out at me was leukocoria, an abnormal white reflection from the retina of the eye because of the potential life-threatening nature of retinoblastoma, a cancer. That condition is usually considered in the evaluation of leukocoria. None of the pages said leukocoria, probably nothing to worry about. Leukocoria can be detected using a camera with a flash. A normal eye will flash back red, but an eye with leukocoria will reflect back white like a cat's eye. I've always been a logical person, a believer in science and evidence-based understanding, but that day, at that moment, I discovered the true meaning of mother's intuition. I tried telling myself that Google was not a reliable diagnostic tool, but for once my brain was in agreement with my heart. The symptoms were too exact a match to be coincidence, and in my heart, I just knew. The next day we were at the GP, who referred us through to the Hamilton Eye Clinic, who referred us to Starship and the Eye Clinic at Green Lane Clinical Centre. Two days later, I was holding my little girl as she was anaesthetised, holding her so close I nearly passed out from the gas myself. Later that day we had our diagnosis. She had retinoblastoma and her right eye would need to be removed. People complain about the public health system, but when they need to move fast, they do. Screeds of appointments, tests, anaesthetics and multiple consent and history forms were interspersed with every fun diverting activity I could think of. We spent nearly five hours at Lollipop's Playland one day. One week after diagnosis, my daughter had her right eye removed. A nucleation, another word in the list of new vocabulary I never wanted to know. She was an easy patient, she liked the smell of the anaesthetic gas, and she was amenable to blood pressure cuffs, thermometers, finger clips, finger pricks and stethoscopes, proud of how well she knew the rules of her strange new world, my brave girl. In recovery after her op, the first thing she asked for was me and Simon, the second was the ice block she knew she had earned. One eye pirate patched with a cotton pad, she came round from the anaesthetic with her usual ease. The only thing that bothered her was the tape holding the line in the back of her hand, a small irritation in the scheme of things. They removed the pad the next day, and we got a first glimpse of Ember's new pink eye. When her eye was removed, they had implanted an acrylic ball covered by a donated sclera, the white of the eye, and stitched this to her eye muscles to give her new magic eye some movement. A clear conformer was slotted in front until her eye had time to heal, at which point her prosthesis would be made. Prosthetic eyes are made from dental acrylic, coloured and shaped for each individual. The implant is permanent. The prosthesis is replaced initially yearly. For the next three months, Ember got used to her pink eye, as did her friends at Crash and people in the community. There were a few curious stares and insensitive questions, but we had tried so hard to normalise it for Ember she could answer nonchalantly, my eye got sick so the doctor took it out and now I have a pink eye and the doctor is making me a magic eye. Her matter-of-factness usually garnered immediate acceptance. Two years, two prostheses, six MRIs, ten general anaesthetics and nearly 100 courage beads later, Ember is a typical five-year-old. Her journey has left few scars on her, a few more on those of us around her. I hope that our journey can help others through their own, as much as I wish that no one else ever had to go through it. It's going up, it's going up, help me, help me. Well, we can do it. I know we can. I know.